Even if you're new to trading or the stock market, you've probably already heard of exchange traded funds or ETFs. You might even employ a few of them right now in your portfolio to help round out your investment strategy. But unless you're a power trader or someone that's seasoned or experienced in the equities market, you likely wouldn't have had a lot of exposure to some of the more advanced forms of ETFs called leveraged and inverse ETFs. These are specialized financial instruments that are often used by professionals or veteran retail traders to help execute some of the more precision trading techniques within their investment plans. Today in this video, I'm gonna shed some light on this topic and give you guys a comprehensive view of what these financial instruments are, go over some of the benefits and the risks of these advanced ETFs, and explain how they might fit into your overall investment strategy. So let's get started. Hey, welcome back to Daniel's Brew, your place for personal finance, investing, and career development insights. A while back, I published this beginner's guide to mutual funds and ETFs, where I explained the origin concept of these two financial vehicles and also highlighted some of the key important things you need to know in order for you to start investing with them. So before we continue on with this session of Daniel's Brew, if you haven't already seen that video, make sure you check that out first. It'll give you a good idea of what ETFs are and the concept behind their creation. And that's critical to know before we dive into these specialized forms of ETFs. But just as a refresher course, let's just take a moment and first baseline the definition of an ETF. ETFs or exchange traded funds are investment vehicles that are made up of a collection of different securities like stocks or bonds that you can trade out in the open stock market. As a retail trader, it's sometimes hard to pick that right stock or that right company to invest in. And sometimes you just wanna invest in a particular strategy or a sector of the stock market. For example, let's say you really had a passion for pets and you really wanted to invest in an area of the stock market that benefited your furry companions. Well, you could invest in an ETF like Paws, which would contain holdings of pet-related companies like Chewy and Fresh Pets and Pet Meds Express. Or if you've always dreamed of flying through space like the Guardians of the Galaxy, then you'd probably want to throw your money into an ETF like UFO, which is comprised of aerospace and space flight communications companies like Virgin Galactic Holdings and Maxar Technologies. But more commonly, most people are interested in investing in the stock market as a whole or a particular sector of the market. And that's where index funds come into play. Index funds make up the vast majority of ETFs in the market, and they track broad market indexes like the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So all in all, whatever your trading philosophy is, ETFs provide you an optimized way to invest in a particular area of the market without the hassle and the risk of choosing individual stocks. So now that you've been refreshed on the basics, let's dive deep into the first of these specialized financial instruments called leveraged ETFs. As we just previously discussed, you already know that most ETFs track an underlying market index. So for example, if you invested in DIA, the SPDR Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, then on any given day, if the Dow rose 1%, you would also see this DIA ETF also rise 1%, as the fund aims to match and mirror the performance of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. But there are different versions of these ETFs that are leveraged and designed to return multiples of a market index's performance. For example, if you invested in an ETF called the ProShares Ultra Pro Dow 30, ticker symbol UDAO, whenever the Dow rose 1%, UDAO would rise 3%, and give you a 3x multiple versus the performance of that index. This is what we call a triple leveraged ETF because it's designed to return a 3x multiple on the return of that index. That sounds awesome, right? These leveraged ETFs are typically used by day traders as they look to maximize the intraday gains from their trades. Because of this multiplication factor, given the right market conditions, you could potentially see swings of 6, 10, 15, and sometimes even upwards of 20% gains within any given single day. Let's take a look at this table. This is something that CNBC published a little while back that showed the daily swings of the S&P 500 during the early stages of the COVID pandemic. If you look at Friday, March 13th, on that day, we saw the single largest daily gain in the S&P 500 since October of 2008. That day, the S&P 500 gained 9.2%. But if you had been holding this triple leveraged ETF, the Direction Daily S&P 500 Bull 3X Shares ETF, ticker symbol SPXL, then on March 13th, you would have seen a gain of 26.9%. If you had $10,000 invested in that ETF, your return on that single day would have been $2,690. Now that's really impressive, but it's important to note that this leverage works the other way around as well. On that following Monday, March 16th, the S&P 500 dropped 12%, making it the single biggest decline day since 1987. If you were holding SPXL on that day, you would have lost 33.9% of your value in your fund. 
That means that same $10,000 would have been reduced to $6,612 on that day. So it's really important to remember this, that the leverage factor works both ways, equal risk to equal reward. Also, as you do some research into leverage DTFs, you'll find that this leverage actually comes in various degrees as well, ranging from 1.5x to 3x of the return. So if you're interested in buying into a leverage DTF, you can also decide how much of a multiple you're willing to risk with your investments. But as you can clearly see, because of the multiplication factor of these leveraged ETFs, if you're lucky enough to make an entry into the market when the market is rising, these specialized financial instruments could end up netting you a high profit within a very short period of time. And that's why these leveraged ETFs are popular amongst day traders and short-term swing traders. Now hearing this, you might wonder, why is it only popular with short-term traders? Why wouldn't someone just buy and hold these leveraged investment vehicles for the long term? I mean, this previous bull run that we just had lasted almost 11 years from 2009 to 2020. And in that time, the stock market rose over 357%. So if we've held a triple leveraged ETF all this time, wouldn't our gain have been over 1,070%? Why wouldn't anyone wanna do this? Well, that's a great question, but there is a specific answer as to why most traders won't hold leveraged ETFs for the long term. And that has to do with something called the decay factor. You see, the reason why holding a leveraged ETF for the long term is dangerous is because leveraged ETFs are rebalanced every day to make sure that they maintain that multiple ratio with their market index. So when the market has a down day, the losses in the leveraged ETF are fully captured and realized, which means if you have further down days, the effect is compounded and the loss in the fund is proportionally greater than compared to the index that it's tracking against. Here's a simple example that explains what I mean. Suppose you buy one share of a triple leveraged ETF at $100. On day one, the market goes up 10%, which means the tracking index goes up to $110, and the 3x ETF goes up to $130. On day two, the market goes down 10%, which means the tracking index goes down to $99, and the triple leverage ETF goes down to $91. On day three, the market goes up 10%, so the tracking index goes to 108.90, and the triple leverage ETF goes to 118.30. And on the fourth day, the market goes down again 10% which means the tracking index goes to 9801 and the triple leverage ETF goes down to 8281. Now, if you look at all four days, given that the price action was simply up and down by the same percentage point each day, you would think that you should be back to even with your investment amount, right? And with the tracking index, you're close, but see what happens to the 3X ETF? That 8281 reflects the decay factor that eats away at your capital due to the leveraged nature of this fund. In order to hold long-term and make a profit from any leveraged ETF, you have to have significantly more up days early on than down days, otherwise this multiple decay factor will kill you. And of course, this is all without the consideration of the high management fees that triple leveraged ETFs typically have. So considering all of this, leveraged ETFs may be instrumental in the short term, but for the long run, because of the value degradation due to the decay factor, these make poor long-term investment strategies. However, just like the leverage factor works in both market gains and losses, the decay factor also works on the positive end as well. This means that if you were lucky enough to buy into a leverage ETF when the market was rising, and you had many successive updates early on, then you could potentially make even more than the projected multiple for this fund, which means then you could theoretically hold for as long as you felt comfortable. But that's a decision you'll have to make on your own based on your respective situation. Okay, so I know that was a lot, so let me just pause here for a second. Did all of this make sense to you guys? Leave me a comment below in the comment section if any of this wasn't clear, and I'll try my best to further clarify for you guys. But if you thought my explanation was effective, if you could smash that like button for me, I'd really appreciate it as it helps out the YouTube algorithm. Okay, cool. So let's move on to the other type of specialized ETFs called inverse ETFs. Okay, now this type of ETF is a little bit more straightforward. Basically, these ETFs aim to achieve the opposite performance of their underlying market index. So for example, if the Dow Jones Industrial Average was down 3% in any given day, then an inverse ETF like the ProShares Short Dow 30, ticker symbol DOG, would be up 3% for that session. It basically performs in the inverse of whatever the underlying index is. But what's really interesting is there are actually categories of ETFs that combine the inverse and the leveraged characteristics of these vehicles. These leveraged inverse ETFs provide not only an opposite, but also a multiple factor on their performance versus their underlying index. Here's a quick list of some of the more common ETFs in this classification that are sponsored by a financial firm called ProShares. As you can see, for these five common total market indexes, here are the triple leveraged inverse ETFs, the double leveraged inverse ETFs, 
the non-leveraged inverse ETFs, double leveraged positive ETFs, and triple leveraged positive ETFs. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are hundreds and hundreds of similar ETFs out there, all with their own unique flavor and style to them. So now that you're aware of these advanced types of ETFs, you might ask, when's the right time to utilize them? Well, there are three main scenarios in which you'd want to use these specialized ETFs. First, if you happen to be holding a long equity position, but you feel like the market is going to turn the opposite direction, as a safety hedge, you could take a small position in a leveraged inverse ETF. If you are using a triple leveraged inverse ETF, in order to hedge your initial investment amount, theoretically, you'd only need to invest another third of the original principle of your long position to break even. That is assuming you are correct on the market direction, of course. Secondly, if you are looking to short a particular equity, then using an inverse ETF might be a safer alternative. Buying into an inverse ETF eliminates some of the inherent risks of holding a short position, like capping the potential loss that you can incur to only what your original principal investment amount is, as well as ensuring more order execution reliability, as you don't have to depend on your broker to find shares to borrow for your short sale. And lastly, a leveraged ETF is a great way to take advantage of some momentum trading, especially when the stock market rises on the back of some positive news. Let me give you a quick example. On April 29th of this year, the stock market had a strong rally off of the positive earnings reports of Microsoft, Facebook, and a few other notable companies. And if you look at this ProShares Ultra Pro QQQ ETF for that day, this ETF, which is a triple leverage ETF that tracks the NASDAQ 100, started rising at 9.41 a.m. and by 10 minutes till closing, it had reached a gain of over 6%. Now it did sell off a little bit into the close as you can see here. But if you rode this way from the start of the morning, you could have cleared a solid 5-6% to off of the earnings momentum from this market. And these are the times where day traders and short-term swing traders take advantage of these leveraged ETFs to maximize the gains from their trades. So there you have it, my in-depth review of leveraged and inverse ETFs. I hope this provides you some clarity on these two investment vehicles and gives you some confidence to utilize them in your own portfolios. If you got some value out of this video, then please hit that like button for me and don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notified anytime I drop videos like this one. And in parting, I'll just leave you guys with this one thought. While these specialized types of ETFs can take a little bit more time to learn than other types of equities out there, I'd really encourage you guys to take some time and research to learn as much as you can about these financial instruments because once you're comfortable trading with these specialized financial tools, your ability to become nimble and creative in your investment strategy grows immensely. So with that, thanks again for joining me today on Daniel's Brew and I'll see you next time.